Agriculture is the largest livelihood provider in India with over 70% of the national workforce directly or indirectly dependent on it. Today, India ranks second worldwide in agricultural output. Yet over 50% of Indian farmers live in debt. Poor infrastructure and lack of access to relevant information contribute greatly to this. Low incomes, a bleak future and stress are compelling farmers to leave their traditional occupation. In this scenario, can information and communication technology or ICT alleviate the farmer's stress and support Indian agriculture? Let's find out. In 1910, Mahatma Gandhi wrote, Farmer is the father of the world. It was a powerful statement on the importance of agriculture for India, which had fallen prey to devastating famines throughout its history. Post-independence, it was the agricultural sector that supported India in its struggles towards development. In this struggle, technology has played a key role. In the 1960s, biotechnology led the transformation that came to be known as the Green Revolution. It made food security status the strongest in Indian history. Now, in the 21st century, it is the digital revolution that hopes to do the same for India's hard-working farmers. My name is Rupesh Vasant Kale. I stay at Gorigaon in Junat Taluka, Pune district. In uh, two acres, I grow uh, grapes. In uh, one acre, cucumber and uh, half an acre of potatoes. For Rupesh, his farm is his livelihood. From sowing to nurturing and harvesting his fields, to ensuring that his produce gets a fair price, he must make many key decisions throughout the farming season. Like choosing the right fertilizer and pesticide, or anticipating the weather, or being up to date with crop diseases, seasonal infestations, and soil nutrient status, etc. For decades and even centuries, Indian farmers have depended on traditional methods of gathering this information, relying on age-old methodologies and sharing knowledge within the community. But in digital India, surely there's a way for information gap to be bridged in an easier, faster and more reliable manner. I wouldn't say it's a misconception. It is a fact that there exists a digital divide because of which the ICT has not yet reached the rural communities and the agriculture communities in India. And hence that digital device leading to a misconception or perception that the ICT solutions are only meant for urban or uh, well-off people. That is indeed not the case. In fact, ICT has created a wealth of data that can be invaluable to farmers. For example, we have satellites to map the weather. Scientists have devised the latest biochemical technologies for procedures like soil analysis. Irrigation technology has also advanced and new age techniques can anticipate and fight crop diseases. But this information rarely reaches the farmer in a timely manner. In order to overcome the digital divide, two things are needed. Compilation of all this data into a farmer-friendly medium and a tool to connect the Indian farmer with all this data. The ideal tool of choice is the mobile phone, which has become the favorite ICT device of Indians from diverse socio-economic communities. Rupesh Kale cannot do without the smartphone. For him, it's so much more than just a device to talk to people. He is able to use his mobile as a farming tool. Thanks to innovations developed by tech organizations like RML Information Services. RML was born in 2007 with a mission and vision of changing the livelihoods of, of farmers in India by providing timely, uh, unbiased and contextual information to the farming community in India. In the early 2000s, mobile technology was in its nascent stage. Smartphones were not easily available in low price ranges. Mobile networks were not as well connected throughout the country. 
So the primary focus at that time was to provide information to farmers using SMS services and the information sets that we were serving were market prices, weather information, crop advisories and news. SMS based information is chargeable to the farmer who must pay for a regular subscription. But now, in the era of smartphones, things are different. Smartphones are like mini computers in the palm of your hand. Just like any other computer, they are powered by an operating system like Android, Windows or iOS. Developers like RML make special mobile applications that run on these operating systems. These applications compile, curate, validate and disseminate a whole host of information pertinent to the farmer. Earlier, we had to buy a separate mobile app for receiving uh, weather forecasts. But uh, in the RML application, we get uh, all this information in uh, one place. So far, their uh, weather forecast uh, have been uh, very accurate. The weather forecast is uh, very helpful. Recently, we got advanced uh, warning of rain. So we had time to plug the cucumber crop and uh, store it uh, safely. Thanks to the app, Rupesh Kale has been able to protect his crop from the vagaries of weather. But weather is information that's equally pertinent to all farmers. What about tailoring the data to each farmer's specific need? After all, Indian agriculture is as diverse in crop varieties as it is in culture. Mobile apps that function on platforms like Android are able to create a unique user profile for each user. It is then able to learn information or attributes about that user. For example, if a farmer often visits the same crop advisory section, the app picks up the frequency of usage and adds it to the user's profile. When we are creating the content, we also tag the content using similar kinds of attributes. As a result, and once the content is tagged and the profile is available, it, it is very easy for our systems to take decision that in terms of what content is applicable to what consumer and who should be getting that kind of a content. For Rupesh, this has meant crop advisories based on his specific location and farm specifications. The crop advisories uh, tell us about the prevalent crop diseases like uh, Davni, Lalkoli and uh, Nageli in cucumber. It's uh, difficult for us to uh, use uh, insecticides. Vendors sell us costly variants, but uh, the app suggests lower cost variants of the same insecticides, helping us save money. One of the biggest advantages of personalizing farmer apps is that it accounts for limitations in literacy in both language and digital domains. While other mobile apps function only in English or Hindi, farmer apps have much more diversity and are represented in most major Indian languages. This increases access to critically important information that is now available on a farmer's fingertips, like the critically important data related to crop commodity prices. Traditionally, the chain of demand and supply for farming produce has looked something like this. The farmer harvests his yield and either gives it to a middleman or takes it to a market also known as a mandi. At the mandi, there are other middlemen or brokers. Just like a financial stock exchange, the supply and demand of a commodity determines its price. For example, if there is a high demand for rice but low supply, the prices go up. If there is a huge supply and lesser demand, the prices go down. And just like the Sensex, Monday prices fluctuate almost daily, on the basis of which transactions take place. 
The worsening Greece debt crisis has cast its shadow on world markets. As a but while we can track the Sensex through real-time update on TV, the same is not always available to most farmers. Usually, farmers who rely on middlemen are unable to get accurate information on market prices for their commodity. The process isn't transparent, and it's the farmer who pays a heavy price by taking a loss. That is why in the 1990s, the government of India decided it was time for an ICT intervention. Throughout the early 2000s, there was a concerted move to bring IT to the agricultural sector. That's when the National Informatics Center, or NIC, was brought in. In 2012-14, there was a NEGP, the National E-Governance Plan for Agriculture, which is a very huge plan for touching almost all the districts and block offices across country with the IT tools and uh, giving the applications for using these, uh, for helping these domains. One of NIC's first challenges was taking on agricultural commodity markets and bringing them onto a single digital platform called AgMarkNet. AgMarkNet is an application portal or a software which was developed to disseminate information about the market arrivals of various agriculture produce commodities, what is the quantity that is arriving in different mandis at, uh, every day and what is the price minimum maximum at which it is being sold in the wholesale markets. AgMarkNet caters to all the stakeholders of the commodity supply demand chain. The farmer, he gets to know where the nearest mandi is for his commodity and what the prices are. The buyer, he also gets to know about the nearest market and the best price. Then there are the ministries and government departments, which can keep an eye on the flow of commodities and also monitor prices. Finally, the information is used by researchers, trend analysts and policy makers who work towards improvements in Indian agriculture. But in the early 2000s, Getting AgMarkNet off the ground required some serious fieldwork to be done. Like travelling to different mandis and getting them on board to contribute information. At the time, most mandis around the country were not digitally supported. They were not connected via the internet and even if they were, they could not convey information as it was all in manual formats. Earlier we had to update records manually. If we had to prepare the previous month's comparison statement, it used to take us a long time to do. Sometimes data would get misplaced and finding it would take even more time. Very often, because of all this, the statement wouldn't be very accurate. Connecting with Mundi's meant ensuring that each one had a computer, a basic internet connection and the means to easily collect the data onto a central database. A small PC was given to each Monday and it was centrally driven project uh, giving training to these people, putting the application software on these PCs and connecting it to simple uh, through uh, PSTN lines, the dial-up connection. So they will work offline, entering the data for all the commodities that has arrived in their Monday on that day and end of the day they can push the file to center server. Things have come a long way since the early days of dial-up internet. In fact, the major bottleneck always had been the network availability in the remote locations. So now with the availability of broadband connection or Wi-Fi or whatever connection, so we have moved to total web-based system since 2014. By making it a web-based system, entries can be made at the Monday, directly into the software's centralized format. By doing this, the market information is immediately conveyed across the internet to NIC's central database. From here, it can be disseminated and used in a variety of ways. Today, AgMarkNet has enabled India's Mondays, and it's not just government agencies that are using the data, but also private technology players who are creating valuable services for the Indian farmer. How? Find out after the break. Welcome to a typical Mandi in the state of Maharashtra. It's an agricultural wholesale market where produce and commodities are brought in from farms to be sold at market price. 
In the days before ICT interventions, they depended heavily on middlemen to sell their stock and they rarely had accurate information about market prices. Earlier I wouldn't get the correct value for my crop yield at the market. Suppose I took it to Alphata market in Junar and the difference in rate was only 2 to 3 rupees, I would incur losses. But today, when farmers visit the Mandi, their experience is different. That's because of mobile phone technology and an app that's tailored just for them. It's the app rather than a middleman that tells them the correct market prices at each Mandi in their vicinity. How does the mobile app get Mandi information about market prices? It's all done through a network of field workers called reporters who visit the Mandi daily and collect the day's commodity prices. We visit uh, merchants and uh, collect information about the day's market deals and uh, current rates. We then forward these market rates on to the portal. We also share information about the supply and uh, quantities of crop products coming into the market. The rates collected by the market reporter are sent to the technology division, which runs the app. Here it is cross-checked thoroughly by a chief market officer. Finally, the latest and most accurate market prices are fed into the system's price portal, which can then be accessed by farmers who can make direct sales. In the RML app, rates of uh, all the markets are listed. It helps me decide which market I should sell my crops in. I can bargain with grain merchants and get the best price. For me, this is the most important benefit of using RML services. Such services have proven to be invaluable to farmers. But is there a way that updates can be made even more seamless? Where the Mundi directly uploads price information to a centralized system? Yes, through the government-run web portal called AgMarkNet. In the last decade and more, AgMarkNet has worked tirelessly to connect over 3,000 Mundis across India to bring their market prices of 200 commodities and further 200 varieties under one centralized, web-based system. Here I am selecting this market-wise, commodity-wise daily report. Here I will select the date and then here it is showing all the states who have reported on this particular date. These are the Mandi who have reported on 8th. So here it is showing Ajatpur, Mandi, Flower Market, Gajipur, Kesopur, Najabgarh, Narela and Sadha Mandi. Now I am selecting this Narela Mandi here. By submitting this, uh, clicking this submit button, here you can see the prices of Narela Mandi. The prices of Aratul Dal is, is showing a minimum price, maximum price and baller price here. Similarly for green grams, paddy, wheat. There's more than one way to do a market search on AgMarkNet. You can search by date, by commodity and by market location, which includes state and district-wise distribution. Farmers can see the last week's rates. If the rates have been increasing by 50 to 100 rupees in the last one to two days, he can decide whether to hold his yield for a few days to get a better price or whether to sell his product now. Comparison reports make the portal valuable not just to farmers but also other stakeholders. For example, buyers can compare the prices of a commodity across different markets all over India. They can then decide where to buy the best variety at the best prices. With so much data pouring in every single day, over the years, AgMarkNet has built an enviable repository related to farming commodities. This can be invaluable data for formulating farmer-friendly policies for the nation. And so, the portal releases regular reports for study by economists, researchers and trend analysts who need a more macro view of market prices. There are comparison reports for different commodities like daily, weekly, monthly and annual reports, reports based on peak sales periods, state-wise and district-wise reports, and much more. Now it is showing the all India level range prices of maximum price, minimum price and molar price here. 
for these varieties. For those who want to learn about agricultural trends but not wish to pore over statistical data, there are special visualizations created by AgMarkNet. Here are different types of graphical reports are there. Commodity-wise graph, market-wise graph, daily market report, price trend. Now suppose I'm selecting this commodity-wise graph here and I will generate the chart for the prices here. Now here you can see the commodities group. How have such ICT innovations helped change farming policies and brought farming communities together? We'll find out after the break. Information and communication technologies are bringing Indian agriculture into the digital age. Innovations like AgMarkNet and mobile apps have not just changed the fortunes of farmers. They have opened up a whole new world of possibilities for government agencies, policy makers and advocacy groups. Government used to really struggle that, okay, there is a news, there is a crisis, there is some um, kind of uh, non-availability of certain commodities and where to get this information. So it was all manual channels. And by the time you compile and present it to the management level for taking some decisions, the information is almost obsolete. So it used to be a lot of uh, struggle compiling that data on the prices and availability of commodities. As for the Mundi or marketplace itself, it has made the journey from manual record keeping to being centrally connected at all times. The benefit of AgMarkNet is that we can check any Mundi's profile while sitting in one place. We don't need to Google the names or number of Mundi's in a particular state. We can see it on AgMarkNet. We can see the Mundi's policies, whether they have any temporary sheds. If we want to construct the same type of sheds or give the same kind of facilities, we can get the details in that Mundi's profile on the AgMarkNet website. ICT is a powerful instrument in the economic upliftment of farmers, as proven by the digitization of Mondays. But ICT can also help a farmer with the science of farming. What does this mean? If we have the back-end databases on, say, who is my seed dealer, who is my fertilizer dealer, what is the variety available with him, and I am a farmer standing in a field, I want to know what is my soil type and when I should sow which seed. If my let long is known to the system through my mobile, I just register on that portal. The system should tell me, okay, you are at this location. This is the uh, nearest uh, fertilizer agency, your retail seed agency, this is a variety. You tell me the crop which you want to sow. Such innovations have not just uplifted the individual farmer, but have also brought the farming community together these are just a handful of technologies entering India's farmlands. But the possibilities are endless. It fulfills Mahatma Gandhi's dream of strengthened villages makes powerful nation. So, we can accomplish Gandhiji's dream. ICT has the potential to transform the Indian agricultural landscape and in turn to bring widespread socio-economic development in rural India. Please send your suggestions and comments to Vigyan Prasar, A50, Institutional Area, Sector 62, Noida, 201-309. You can also email us at info at vigyanprasar.gov.in.